morning, everybody. here starting off in Minot, North Dakota. picked up those tires in Burlington, Iowa. They've got to go to a town called Langbank, Saskatchewan. You know, the last time we were in Minot, we were talking about bad service that we had at another truck stop on the other side of town. So I went to the Shad's Crossroad now. Amazing. It's very nice. Thank you. Old Blue's ready to go. Now I'm ready to go. <clears throat> I'm about an hour and a half from the border. They're expecting me. Uh, my customs has cleared already. It cleared uh, last night, which is awesome. So we're good to go. We're going to start her up. Start rolling down the road. You want to come with me? Don't forget to make sure you're subscribed to my channel down below. I make new videos every day as we're trucking across North America. My region and everything that I do is described in the description of all my videos. The only thing that's changed is that we sold our land. <laughs> I was reading my description in a video yesterday and I said, oh, that's still there. Because <laughs> I don't put that in every day, I just have it as default. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it always goes in there. We had land and we we're going to build our dream house on it. Our dream has since adjusted since we've had our baby and we're going to be uh, staying in town where there's more services available. So we won't be building our house on that land anymore, but that doesn't really have a lot to do with what we're doing right here today. So let's get to trucking. I'll leave that subscribe button to you it's right down below the video. Pause the video right now. Just go make sure you're subscribed. Sometimes you get unsubscribed for no reason just by YouTube. I don't know. I don't know. Just make sure. Double check for me if you don't mind. Hit that like button when you're ready to. Let's hit the road.
Canada, right behind this building, right over there. We're at duty free. Just pulled in here just to make sure all my paperwork is in order and uh, to call the customer, let them know that, hey, I'm at the barter, I'll see you soon. Dining and dancing over there in case you want to go dancing. I've never seen that. I don't think it's open anymore. There's a for rent sign in the window. If you want to rent a dance hall, Portal, North Dakota. It's your place. So this is Portal, North Dakota. Just over the line there, this little invisible line that runs runs through here behind that green building. The line there, that's North Portal. Very original with their town names out here, I know. I believe this used to be just one town, and then one day they're like, you know what? We're just gonna cut you in half. That half's ours, that half's theirs. So this is Portal, North Dakota. The other side is North Portal, Saskatchewan. Once we cross the line, we're also in mountain time zone because Saskatchewan is smart and does not participate in the ridiculousness of daylight savings time. So they stay the same all the time. So in summertime, they're off partying with Alberta in mountain time. In wintertime, they fall back to Manitoba to keep us warm together. So wintertime, they're on our time. Alberta, uh, summertime, they're with Alberta. So it's summertime. We gain an hour as soon as we cross the border because here in North Dakota, this is still central time. It's confusing, right? You gotta, you're like right on the line, you gotta make sure you know what time zone you're in so that you can make your delivery appointment accurately. I forgot that that happened. So I just looked at the time now, I'm like, oh, okay, so I should be at my customer at about two o'clock. And I punched it into uh, my GPS here and it says, oh, you'll be there at one o'clock. Huh? Better check or work, right? You, you never just trust your GPS. So check or work. Are you actually taking me to the right place? Why am I going to save an hour? That's right. Daylight savings time. So we have to give credit where credit is due. I hate saying this. It's hard to say. Thanks, Karen. Reminded me that once we cross the line, I gain an hour. So I'm not going to be at my customer at 2 o'clock. I'm going to be there at 1 o'clock an hour early. It worked out for me. At least it's not the other way around of being an hour late. <laughs> now I'll be an hour early. So let's go and uh, let's go get these tires off this trailer. I'm gonna make a quick call into the office before I get moving, see if they've got any plans for me. I might be just heading back to Manitoba for a reload. Maybe they'll send me to, to Weyburn. That's close by. Sometimes I pick up loads there. And, yeah, I gotta call in and see what the load gods have for me. I gotta kneel down and beg and grovel at their feet. I'm just kidding, it's not like that. They're great people. They'll find me something. That's why uh, I'm happy that all those headaches are are on the, I don't have to sit somewhere, you know, like search through load boards myself looking for the perfect load. They do that for me and then they ask me, hey, how's this look? Hey, how's this one look? We got this one, this one, or this one. Which one do you want? You know what I mean? Got all my paperwork, my IDs, my passport, all set, ready. Confirmed here I have the message saying that my load has been cleared so I can show up at the window there and they're expecting me like I always say never show up to the border before they're expecting you they really don't like that it messes up the paperwork messes up your whole day they have to know what's coming who's bringing it in what truck where to come from where's it going what's in it and then they might want to double check and take a closer look at it maybe depending you know you, when I haul, when I used to haul dry vans for six years, you know, they'd ask what's in the trailer. Uh, they'd have to, you know, take what's on the paperwork and my word for it, or they'd get me to back into the dock and they'd double check, right? But I have an open deck now. I'm on open deck division. I like it a lot better, actually. And uh, they can just see what's on my trailer. I'm like, so what are you hauling? I'm like, tires. You see? But, you know, they may want to run me through scanners and stuff to see that there's nothing inside the tires. And uh, they, they got to make sure that, you know, Canada and U.S. are very friendly countries. We're, I don't want to say we're practically the same because we're not. We have separate histories and separate issues and stuff, but we're, very, we're like siblings. You know, two brothers are related, have the same last name, have the same family name, have the same parents, but they're two different people, right? They get married to different people and they start their own families. That's sort of Canada and the US, we're siblings. We get along very well, but we still need to know what goes across our border this way and what goes across our border that way. Just, you gotta keep track of everything, otherwise it's just chaos. And you can't have chaos. Everything has to be neat and organized. 
sides. If you don't enforce this stuff, you know, there's always bad actors that take advantage of weaknesses and things like that right away. So you, it, it's a shame that we have to, but we have to keep, we're, keep an eye on people sometimes. There's you know, somebody out there who's going to ruin it for everybody, you know? So, uh, usually at the border, I don't have an issue. I, I cross all the time, like a couple of times a week. Usually at Pembina and Emerson, sometimes here at North Portal and Portal. You know, I'm sure my name is all over in their system. They know me when I pull up. They know my truck. Some of them watch my videos. I know that because they've told me. But it's usually the, the, a very decent experience, a good experience. They're not there to be my friend. I show up at the window. They ask me all that they need to know. Usually they'll be like, you know, where'd you come from? Where'd you go? How long were you gone? Did you buy anything? Is there any weapons aboard? Is there... Uh, uh, any drugs, alcohol, tobacco on board? You know, do you have anything to declare? You're not allowed to take fresh fruit or meat to cross the border. Uh, typical questions, and sometimes they'll like throw throw in a weird one in there just to throw you off, or they'll ask you the same question but like three different ways, just to see if you'll come up with the same answer. Just just answer them. They're they're just doing their jobs. Speak when spoken to. I never go into detail. I mean, if they want to know the details, they'll ask. I'm not going to tell them my life story. If they, if they want to know more, they'll ask, and I'll tell them more. I've got nothing to hide, so i got nothing to worry about. Don't be nervous when you go up there. They're just doing their jobs. I mean, unless if you've got something to hide, then you should be nervous because they're going to they're gonna find out. They're, they're trained to know these things. All right. Enough bibble babbling. Let's give her. Let's get across the border. Oh, these trucks are cutting in front of me. Oh, dear. It's my fault. My fault. I stopped. Now they're getting in front of me. I'll see you on the other side. Greetings from the Kanucky side. Back in Canada. Take the next right onto Saskatchewan 18 East. The Great White North. Currently the Great Green North. I like that one better. Turning on to Saskatchewan East for 44 kilometers. I was about to tell him. I'm gonna take Saskatchewan 18 East. On this road for 44 kilometers. Yeah, I know Karen. I got Google and Karen guiding me here. They were both giving me different routes. I chose to go with Google. So I'm thinking Karen's gonna be mad at me now. Prairie town in Canada looks like. Looks just like any town in North Dakota in the USA. duty unloading cargo. I always want to know what I'm doing. What are you doing now? What are you doing now? What are you doing later? Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Why does it want to switch me back onto American Hours of Service? I'm nowhere near the border right now, my friend. No. No. Huh? This thing's acting weird on me here. Now it wants to change back to Canada. Well, why'd you change in the first place? Of course we're in Canada. 
Technology, I tell you, there we go. Okay, we're on duty, we're unloading cargo. Are you happy? Government? Just letting you know. Letting you know. Always gotta know everything I'm doing. Man, it's pretty soon, gonna get to the point where they're gonna demand you pull over if you have to sneeze. No sneezing and driving. And if you're sitting in the parking lot and you fart, someone from the government's gonna pop up on your window right here and say, hey, did you log that as on duty? I'm just joking. It is a little bit excessive, I think, but I understand the need for regulation and laws. You don't want it just to be a complete free-for-all. I'm not a libertarian in that way. I'm a conservative guy. I mean, I just, sometimes it's a little bit restrictive, but we get the job done anyways, right? Can't hold back all of this. Get the job done. Get the job done. Dun, 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 dun. One second, I gotta put my Sunday shirt on so that I don't get run over. Dun, 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 dun. My zipper hasn't been working that great on this thing lately. I'm gonna have to get a new one soon. Let's see if it works now. holding for now, but it, it pops open. I know I'm popping open. I know I'm working on it and trying to bring my weight down. That's what I tell the scale every time I roll over it. Like, I know I'm a little heavy. I know. I'm not going on a diet. I'm just trying to get more active. I know. I'll talk to you when we're out of here. Eee, great. I need to put on my Scottish hat when I do that. I have one. I think it's still in here. Right? It's in here somewhere. So we have our marching orders. My trailer is empty. We're going to call it a week. Going home. Nothing going on right now. So I'll go and uh, I'll put this trailer in the yard because it's a triaxle. I don't want to drag around a triaxle for longer than I have to, just in case it's needed for a heavier load, right? And uh, head back to the shop. Should be at the shop tonight then sometime, I think. Unless if something else comes up. But. Uh, Go home. sunny like 10 minutes ago I crossed into Manitoba and boom it's a little moist out there just a bit not too bad yet though it'll be good for the crops I think all the farmers around here have got their fields seeded already so I'm thinking they're uh, probably pretty thankful for this rain just coming into Burton Manitoba on the west side we're a few hours from our yard should make it to the shop tonight. A one kilometer. Take the entrance to the right on RTE 20 North RTE 20 North Highway 59 South RTE 59 South and then keep to the right in 420 meters. In 800 meters, take the entrance to the right on RTE 20 North RTE 20 North Highway 59 South RTE 59 South and then keep to the right in 420 meters.
back you did good another week old blue it was a good week huh <sighs> slowly finding places for everything in here definitely not finished yet probably have to build quite a bit of shelving in here but uh first things first i mean maybe this weekend i'll get to uh tape the lines on the floor again like i had in the other shop oh whatever that's okay. For now, I rinsed her down before I brought her in here. It's time to go home and hold my baby. That was a good day. You know, started off in Minot, North Dakota, delivered into Langbank, Saskatchewan, and then came home empty. Uh, dropped an empty trailer off, the triaxle, because I don't need it, and leave it there for someone who does need it. And Old Blue is back home. So I guess I'll talk to you soon. I gotta go home. Right, old blue? You have a good night. And off we go. Bit of a short week this week. Well, we left early Monday morning. And when I'm filming this, it's a Thursday evening. Must be a little slow towards the end of the week sometime. I wish I would have scheduled old blue in for a service tomorrow then. If I would have known I'd be home, that's what I would have done. But usually I schedule the services for Mondays because it's easier to make sure I'm home on a Monday. Because I leave during the week and if I'm taking a load through past the house and I happen to go past here on the weekend, it's much easier to stop in and make sure I just stay home a little extra longer so that the truck can get serviced on a Monday, right? Fridays is kind of unpredictable. Sometimes I'm home Fridays, sometimes I'm not. Not complaining though, got some work I gotta do at home. We gotta start painting the outside of the house soon. I don't think I don't think that'll be a this weekend or this month project. I think that's going to be a July project. I gotta get a hand sander, palm sander, sand down the old paint just a little bit. And uh, I already got the paint and everything to uh, repaint the outside of the house. Oh, there's that, there's always projects. There's always something to do, right? And now that we have a baby in the mix too, the list is endless. And that's why I say everybody's trucking life and trucking work-life balance is different. When I show you how my life is, it's not necessarily how your trucking life is going to be when you're on the road. You gotta find out where your balance is and what works for you. I know Kurt on Trucking with Schmidt was saying the same thing uh, about a week or two ago about how staying out longer for him doesn't really equal more money. Depends on the load, I guess. I mean, I'm on percentage, so it depends on what you're hauling. Depends how many empty miles. That depends on a lot of factors, you know? It's not the same for me every month either. It's not like a set in stone, like every single month is the same. I don't work by the hour. I work by the job, and the jobs are always different. 